Now this is again very similar. You try to dope it again. You put salicylic acid that's found in a lot of uh, facial creams and um, acne reducing agent. All right. This is also used to make aspirin. You throw in some acetic anhydride, you get the ester, which is what some of us consume when we have migraine aspirin. But of course, we have analogy if you have something called the G6PD, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Please do not consume aspirin. It's not good for your health, not good for your blood. Alright, again, it is a byproduct substitution reaction. Two reactants and two products. <coughs> Anhydrides behave in a similar manner as your acid chloride, so it will be substituted by the nucleophile and forms the respective products. Okay, remember, but this cannot be converted back to the acid halide because this is the most reactive. This is the boss. This is the boss. This is the king. So this is the highest end of the throat. You can't get to this. Now for esters, they are among the most widespread of all naturally occurring compounds, and they undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction more slowly than acid halides or acid anhydrides. I've mentioned just now because the electron delocalization effect, the part about anhydrides having two CO groups to delocalize electrons, and that gives rise to the different kind of stability of the, the resonance form. All reactions are esters are actually applicable to acyclic and cyclic esters. So for cyclic esters, we call them lactones. Lactones, okay? Do not be troped by this word here. This doesn't mean any ketone, but lactone. Cyclic esters called lactone. For instance, see, cyclic ester is a lactone. How to prepare ester? If you have mentioned just now, could just go back to your notes and flip through, or can rewind the lectures. You know the answer. There's a, there's a, there's several ways to do it. All right. See here, there's some pros and cons to using different methods. Please study them. Now esters can undergo a base catalyzed hydrolysis to reform the. The fragments that, that was used to form the ester. So here we get the alcohol and carboxylic acid. And we call this saponification. Okay, esters undergoes both acidic and basic hydrolysis to yield carboxylic acid and alcohol. Now for basic medium, we call this saponification. Basic hydrolysis occurs through nucleophilic acyl substitution pathway. So here the nucleophile is a very strong hydroxide attacks the C delta plus push the pi bond away, forming tetrahydrostructure. Now it pushes back and kicks out the OR negative. And then here you get a carboxylic ion, which is still not the acid yet. So you add an acid here yourself to get back the carboxylic acid. So this pathway, we call it the occurrence by the cleavage of the CO bond, the single bond, huh, rather than the OR bond here. Take note, we cut this bond in black. We cut here, the one adjacent to the CO double bond, because it's weakened by that. Take note. Ester hydrolysis is also very common in the biological pathway of the human body and also in animals, creatures. So we digest fat and oils involved in two sequential nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. So somebody take a laugh at this. This is uh, just a fat, okay? This is not A fat. Somebody asked me, what is A fat, B fat? No, it's just a fat. A fat molecule enzyme connects to this and then it will break down the fat via this pathway the mechanism do not memorize this uh, this is not tested but I just want to show you an example that it is a similar mechanism in the body naturally but that was done in the previous slide those are man-made syn synthetic reactions in the lab So for the most common mechanism of the acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis is the reverse of the Fischer esterification reaction. So step one, again, you may have seen this before. O lone pair of the CO double bond, pick up the H of the acid, making this more electron deficient. 
it will attract the water which is not that nucleophilic but it just attracts forming tetrahedral structure here tetrahedral and equilibrium will push and form the pi bond once more to get back your alcohol and carbon so that's it so the last step is where you reform the alcohol and acid and of course your catalyst remember catalysts they are not used up they are regenerated so this is where it is released again the H plus right Esters reacts with amines and ammonia to give amide. Of course, it's true because this is a better nucleophile than the OH or OR. So you throw in some ammonia, it will kick out the OCH3 to get the alcohol and the amine. Similar to just now, the H from here goes with this part to form that. You see the color scheme? I hope you really see it. Now esters can undergo reduction reactions because they have the CO double bond. It attacks by the hydride equivalent of the lithium aluminum hydride. Then undergoes this mechanism via the tetrahedral intermediate species to form the aldehyde intermediate. But we know that we can't isolate this. So the second part will be the same thing over and again to form the alcohol. Now if you use dibar, this is a milder reducing agent. So it will only stop at the aldehyde. So this is very useful if you want to make the aldehyde from the ester. For esters and lactones, they react with two equivalents of greenout reagent to give tertiary alcohol. The first one is to cut open this. Second part is to add to it. Right? So again, it's very similar. Just imagine that this part is like the, the nucleophile. Step one is the nucleophilic substitution. So we get two phenyl ring by phenyl ketone. Right, but of course we can't isolate this because it's still very reactive. So the next molecule of that goes in and whack. And you get the final product, triphenylmethanone. Very high U, 96%. Now, amides are abundant in proteins, nucleic acids and many pharmaceuticals, but we know that they are the least reactive and that's why they are very good for proteins. Proteins are found in the body in the form of muscles, uh, hair we have that, nails, all these are structural, all these are structural components in the body because they are stable. Finally, it's also in penicillin G and ribonucleic acid. Okay, so how to reach prepare amide? Next lecture we'll go through that, but now just give you a short preview. Amides are usually prepared by the reaction of acid chloride. You see again, we like to use this because it's very reactive. The reaction goes almost 100% with an amine. Ta-da! And we know that amides undergoes hydrolysis to give carboxylic acid plus amine on heating. Take note, you need heat for it to occur. Right? Without heat, it may not be so good. The mechanism again is very similar to ester if you notice right the the right segment in the previous few slides it is very similar so try not to see them as different pathway but similar just that you dope it you have different substituents but in general the mechanism is very much the same then you see that actually organic chemistry is not that difficult because you see it's like a pattern you spot the pattern you know it substitute think a bit more voila Okay, for the basic hydrolysis, your nucleophile is the hydroxide, which is very strong. So it goes in, attack, and then after that, it kick out the amide. But we know the amide is also a very good base. So what happens is the amide pick up the H of the carboxylic acid, and that's why you get carboxylate, not the acid uh, like just now previously. Can we call it just now for the ester? We know that when we throw in lithium aluminum hydride, we get primary alcohol. But now for the amide, when you throw in the same reagent, lithium aluminum hydride, you will get back the amine. So basically how I see simpler is right, when you throw in a lithium aluminum hydride and the amide, you just kick out this and you push hydrogen through it. That's all. Simple as that. So this, converse, this conversion is only specific to 
emit. And this is reflective, and this reduction is very effective for both acyclic and cyclic amides. Cyclic ones we call it lactam, lactam because um you know amide, lactam, cyclic lactam. So it's very good to prepare lactams. <laughs> Now, for amide reduction, it occurs by the nucleophilic addition of hydro ions to the amide carbonyl group, followed by the expulsion of the oxygen atom as an aluminate anion. So let's go straight to the picture. Step 1, of course, same old story, nucleophile from here, attack and break the pi bond, goes up to form a tetrahedral intermediate. Next, the aluminium here, which has an empty orbital, will be attached to the oxygen. And now, it comes together as a good living group. So the lone pair from the nitrogen forms the pi bond and kicks out this living group and hence you get the amine. Right, so that's all for this topic. Please revise your work and do the tutorials. Read through this lecture again. You can play in a slower manner or even faster. You can always seek consultation with me. Just please clarify anything you don't know, right? Do not be afraid to ask. Thank you. Have a nice day. See you.